Hello and welcome to Bill Pound Salt and Cooking with Saltware. In this short video we're going to show you herb pork chops, apples and red peppers all grilled on the saltware salt block. We're going to begin by providing the herbs for the pork chops. Now if you have uh, fresh rosemary or any rosemary that you get from the grocery store uh, what we recommend is just peel it off of the stalk like this, let it drop onto the block, and let that fall onto the block. The heat of the block is actually going to warm the rosemary help some of the essential oils that are in the rosemary to come out. So we throw it on there like that. You can actually begin to hear it sizzling, snapping, popping. We have just a little bit more we're going to throw around here. It smells so herbaceous. It's actually going to start to smoke a little bit. And then we're going to add the pork chops right on top of it. You can hear those smoke. And one of the reasons we're providing this video to you is so that you can see that full thickness pork chops can actually be cooked on the block. So we begin with two. We're actually going to throw a third one on here as well. Uh, but it doesn't look like there's room. So we're going to do these two at a time. As you can see, they are nicely marbled. So all that pork fat, the pork strip, the fat strip around the edge, that's all going to uh, sear and uh, kind of help seep into the block a little bit. And it's going to give us some additional a cooking benefit to go with the uh, rosemary that's been thrown on the block. So as you can see, our pork chops are beginning to cook. They're about a third, quarter to a third of the way up. You can see some of the rosemary has totally uh, started to brown and char. So we're going to take our first two pork chops. We're actually going to flip them over now. Allow them to finish cooking on the other side. hear the sound. You can see how well those did, not being just directly on the salt, but uh, actually being preserved underneath the pork chops. So what happens is the essential oils actually heat up and begin to uh, boil out of the rosemary, and then you are left with uh, the essential oils of the rosemary actually infusing the meat and some of the salt being dissolved as well. So we're going to leave those just like they are for a minute. Let them finish. So as you can see, our pork chops are cooking nicely. Uh, one of the benefits of cooking with the salt block on the grill is that uh, you can finish the pork chop entirely on the salt block or my preference is actually to take the pork chops off of the salt block and I like to put a few marks on them just for presentation purposes so I'm going to pick the pork chops up and drop them over here on the grill to the side you can't see it you'll see for presentation later as we plate everything up that uh, they'll have those nice sear marks on there so we're just going to pick the rosemary loose again. Throw it back on there. I'm going to pinch a little bit more and drop our next set of pork chops. And, uh, start two more. Again you can hear that the block is still very hot. Still searing nicely which is what we want to hear. second pork chop on there just like that. Give everything a few more minutes and we'll come back. Our second set of pork chops is cooking nicely. As we prepare to turn these, a couple of notes. Uh, you want to leave the fat on them, don't trim the fat off. Uh, bone on pork chops are also good because they uh, lend a bit of flavor to the entire process as well. You know, for about uh, three or four decades now the argument has been bandied back and forth about what temperature to cook your pork to. Uh, bottom line is, cook it to a temperature that's safe, uh, cook it to a temperature that you prefer. And so usually you will hear people tell you medium well to well done. Uh, what you do in your own kitchen is uh, entirely up to you because it's your health. For me personally, I prefer to take them to a uh, medium, about 140, 145 degrees, depending upon the size of the pork chop. Let it come up the additional uh, 3 to 7 degrees that uh, the temperature raises after the meat has been pulled off of the grill. So you can see again our uh, salt block is still very hot because we have that nice sizzling process going on. You can see the rosemary is uh, nicely cooking as well on the bottom side of each of those when they first hit. Getting a nice crust, getting a nice sear, uh, those are going to be absolutely delicious. So the last of our pork chops are off to the side. As uh, we've mentioned previously, the salt blocks are much like uh, cast iron cookware of any type. So 
you want to make sure that you treat it as though it's a seasoned pan. And in this case, you can see the rosemary is still there. You can see some of the crust from the essential oils, from the rosemary, from the pork fat of the uh, pork chops themselves. And so uh, we always recommend using some sort of high moisture content fruit or vegetable to kind of basically help deglaze the uh, salt block and uh, help dissolve some of the salts and some of the rest of the uh, delicious goodness that's found on the salt block from cooking the protein. So in this case today, we are using New Zealand Envy apples. Anytime you use apples on the grill, you'll typically find that the skins get a little bit tough as you grill them. So we recommend actually peeling the apples so that uh, you get the full benefit of just the uh, apple -y goodness on the outside. Try to squeeze the last few of these in here. And as you can see, Everything runs a little bit tight. We have a total of four apples here, peeled and quartered. Looks like we'll be able to get all four of them here on our salt block. And for reference, our salt block is an 8 by 12. We find that that's uh, fairly convenient for cooking for three to six people, no more. So we're going to leave the apples on there. We're going to let them cook for a little bit. You can see a little bit of the cooking process has already started here along the bottom edge. Uh, we're going to close this up and we're going to walk away for a few minutes. So we're going to go ahead and turn our apples here. Uh, we're probably starting to get, yep, get a good little bit of caramelization on them. Get everything rotated around here very quickly. Uh, you can see it's pretty much the same on all of them. The apples will give off a bit of juice as they begin to cook a little bit more. This first, first side, not so much. But uh, again, the whole purpose is to help uh, dissolve off some of the rosemary essential oils, some of the salt, and some of the uh, protein enzymes that came from the pork chops while they were cooking. So our apples are about halfway cooked. We're going to rotate places here between the apples and the peppers and the onion. Move those off to the side. We've already put the red peppers on the grill just to get them started. And again, the benefit of using the grill and the salt block at the same time gives you the ability to continue cooking, to do different things for presentation or for personal taste preference. So, throw those on there. We let some of the moisture from the peppers actually dissolve some of the salt. Salt some of the pepper there as well. See a little bit of char that we were getting on the back side of the peppers. So we'll have some nice grilled roasted peppers to go with our apples, rosemary herb pork chops. Grill all those together for just a minute, let them cook. So we're just finishing up with the uh, cooking and grilling of all of our fruits and veggies. The uh, peppers and the onions are finishing up here on the block. We're going to pull all of those off in just a minute. The uh, apples are just finishing as well. We'll take everything inside, we'll plate it up, and uh, we'll show you what that looks like. So we conclude by saying thank you for joining us here at Go Pound Salt, and as always, remember, happiness with us is just a lick away.